Hello and welcome to the Video Game Book Club. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm Savvy. I'm Elise. And this month we read Alan Wake. By Rick Burroughs. A novel based on the new psychological thriller video game. <laughs> That's what it says. It says, some are born to light, some are born to endless night. That is an interesting quote to pick. <laughs> I mean, they could have done the quote about the lady with the lamp. Oh, from the song? That song slaps. <laughs> I love that song. She's like, I heard you the whole time. So this is great because finally went, got around to playing Alan Wake. <laughs> Yay. Uh, I also played Alan Wake. It was part of the PlayStation Plus games before the alan wake 2 game came out i got it for free on the epic game store at some point in my life <laughs> so Absolutely. i did not play the remaster but she did i played the remaster uh because i didn't like their faces in the remaster i think they made them look worse huh. although in the original i wish they would close their mouths more <laughs> They kind of kept them open, I think, a little bit too much. You were telling me, too, that it was sponsored by, like, Duracell. Oh, yeah. They had the advertisement still in, uh, obviously, the the original version. I think they had to change some it of the Verizon, too. They had Verizon. They had Duracell. No, what was it? Uh, Energizer. No. Oh. They had Energizer and uh, a couple other stuff. I don't think they changed the songs. Hmm. They might have gotten the copyright. copyright back. All right. For the back cover, well, actually, the front cover has, I think it's just the cover of the game, right? Yeah. It's Alan Wake in big letters. He is with a gun and a flashlight in the A of Wake, and then it's reflected in the water. And then there's the lady's face in the water as well. Yeah. It's, I wonder if the uh, if There's also the Taken face. Oh, you're right, there are taking Oh, that's supposed to be the trees and the reflection. That's cool. Back of the book. Welcome to Bright Falls, a seemingly idyllic small town in the Pacific Northwest. Some place that has deer. The perfect it's place. Washington. <laughs> they say that it's Washington. Oh. Well, then why didn't they just say Washington? <laughs> the Pacific Northwest is close enough. Okay. <laughs> The perfect place for Alan Wake, a best-selling crime novelist, and his wife Alice to relax for a few weeks. Maybe a second honeymoon and the fresh air will cure Wake of his writer's block. Second honeymoon? They probably already had one. Uh, I, what, yeah. I feel like they've been married for a while, though. Yeah. Oh. But he's kind of a... They don't go on vacation a lot, it They seems, do not. So. Although he hasn't written anything in two years. So what have he? What has he been doing in two years? Drinking and moping. Mm. <laughs> but when Alice goes missing under mysterious circumstances, Wake's desperate search for her leads him to a hell he can he, only he could imagine. In the depths of a nearby cauldron lake, a dark and malevolent presence has awakened from a long slumber. It's reaching out now, turning the townsfolk into mindless killers, sheathed in shadow, vulnerable only to light. They are taken. Wake's journey will lead him to the very edge of madness, and deep within the dark woods, he will come face to face with a story he has no recollection of ever writing. This was uh, brought out, uh, the cover art is by Remedy. And came out in 2010, Microsoft Corporation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took us a long time because this was an Xbox exclusive, I yes. believe. Because it's Microsoft. Yeah. So what's interesting about the author? <laughs> he has, um, first of all, it's dedicated to my brother James, wherever you are. He has information both at the beginning and the acknowledgments and at the end uh and about the author which he's an interesting guy rick uh he lives in this pacific northwest mm -hmm. in uh, a small cabin. so he knows he built himself he uh he hasn't got it quite all figured out yet is what he said yeah he's mostly off grid and his neighbors had to feed him or else he probably wouldn't have survived so. yeah he was snowed in is what he said in the beginning also this is the first book he's ever written and the only book he's ever written that we know of as far as goodreads knows yes. because he, that's the only one on goodreads and that's wild to me like who found this man on an a-frame a -frame cabin in the pacific northwest to give him the gig of writing alan wake novel you are not alan wake did this come out before the game did i have no idea when did it come out 2010 
No, but like when in 2010? Uh, initial release for Alan Wake, I'm assuming the game, was May 14th, 2010. This one was May 25th, 2010. Is that the book release? Yeah, it's a book release. So May 25th, so it's like a 10 days, 11 days later? Yeah, 11 yeah. days later. Strange. <laughs> that makes kind of sense because of a lot of times when we're reading these books, you see that the author doesn't get a lot of info, especially of the changes. I ended up on Fable because uh, this book was available on Fable. The first couple chapters are on there if you want to check it out. Hmm. I gave it a 3.5 because although I still have questions about the ending of Alan Wake, I felt like Burroughs did the best he could with what I he was given. It was interesting to I was like because there's weird changes in this book. That I felt like were kind of random. And I don't know if it was creative liberties or if the manuscript he got <laughs> was like I'd also the be interested on how they get the information. Do they get the script from the video game? I'm assuming game? they get the script from the yeah. video game and then they have to piece it together. Uh, mm. So maybe the script was a little bit different. I thought this one it. was more descriptive than other video game books. This one was close enough. Like the changes weren't offensive, I would say. They were like... Yeah. They're fine. I gave it a three. I was debating between a three and a four, but honestly, it's kind of boring. There's a lot <laughs> in there. And especially if you've never played Alan Wake, I would I would think that people would like it. It's missing, though, some of my uh, favorite things from the game. Yeah, that's why the changes were a little bit different. But I think it's just because of the length. Because it's over 300. It's a little over 300 pages. Like 303, something like that. Hmm. Uh, which is a little on the... Usually these books are about 250. So it was a little on the longer side. There is a couple of things from the game that are not in there. But each yeah. chapter is kind of like a chapter in the game almost. Almost. Or a different place. I would say like, I don't know. Like every three chapters is like a game in-game chapter. Yeah. Well, it's like one chapter was the um, Hartman, one chapter was the farm, one chapter was... Yeah, if you didn't know, Alan Wake the game is episodic. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you've played the game and you're just here for the Alan Wake info because you want to play the second one. <laughs> and you're like, I don't really want to play Alan Wake 1. Well, we will definitely spoil the whole Alan Wake and talk about the game yeah, as well. Yeah, discuss... At the end of what most it means of the chapters as well, there is a like a picture of a crumpled up page with typing on it, which is what happens in the game is that as Alan's going through, he's finding these papers of the manuscript and other characters are too. So you get like piecemeal story of a story yeah. while they're trying to tell the story. It's very like you, inception. You get like information on what's about to happen. Sometimes and then sometimes it's random characters it's that I'm like, who characters? is this? And sometimes it's just it's like stuff that's not going to happen like for a long time. Yeah, and then sometimes they're repeated too, which I didn't like. Like if you're going to put the page at the end, some of it I could see if it was coming up, but I some of it was within the same chapter. I think they're assuming like the person reading this um, maybe hasn't played Alan Wake, and they're like, oh, if they get random pages that don't correlate to the story, they might be like, I don't understand. But if they get one that they just read about. Them, then they'd be like, oh, sense. okay. Piecing these pages together. At least a couple of those. Because there's a couple of in here that are very strange and have characters I've never heard of before. And I'm assuming that those are from the nightmare mode. Because I ain't gonna play that game in no. nightmare mode. I'm sorry. So if you haven't played Alan Wake, you go through the game and you collect these pages of the manuscript that Alan Wake wrote. Yeah. But he doesn't remember. Hence that at the end of the book. But if you have to play it on a different mode to collect all of the pages. You have to beat it on like a, the mode first yeah. before Nightmare Mode even unlocks. And then you have to go back and replay it on Nightmare, I think, to get all of the pages. Like yeah. these, they're not even available in other modes. So I was not about that. So I will never read um, Alan Wake's full manuscript. Maybe online. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see anything else. Author's interesting. Manuscript pages after every chapter. We gave it like three, three point five. It's okay. It was an okay story. <laughs> um, I talk. I know you and I had talked about this when yeah. we when I first played Alan Wake. I I wasn't a huge fan of the game just because I felt like it was a knockoff of like Stephen King. Like I think it's called The Secret Window. It has the movie with Johnny well, Depp where he's I the think author. Alan Wake is so unabashedly its influences. It's is it basically more of an homage? It, yeah. It's like Stephen King, and it says it outwardly. It's like. Twilight Zone, Stephen King, 
uh, Twin Peaks. Th- that's what it is all mashed together. Yeah, it is like if, and it's unashamed of it. <laughs> if Stephen King wrote Twin Peaks, yeah, that's kind of what this book is, and that's fine. Why don't you? Why do you hate so much when so people Stephen are King homaged? for me is. In the game, he like straight out came out and said it was like, well, oh, I call it, like, one guy King, will yeah. call him Hemingway or Stephen King, yes, yeah. So or it he'll, was, he'll quote Stephen King. Like the first thing yeah. Alan does is quote Stephen King. So this game is like, yeah, we know Stephen King for me <laughs> is very much hit or miss. I either like the his work or I really hate it. So I, for the start off for that, where this game is based on Stephen King, I'm like. Mm. Yeah, but, like, it's not Stephen King, though. Yeah. Like, this guy is not Stephen King. He's not. He's a crime writer. Yeah. Which is not Stephen King. More like thing. Tom Clancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tom Clancy doesn't write his books, though. That seems like a fake name, right? No, Tom Clancy is, like, military. Rainbow Six. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There's a bunch of other writers that write crime Like who? So. Bring it up. I'm... <laughs> Think about it. Um... Come on. Smarty Pants. <laughs> what is it? um who is military crime it's the same thing i know there's a bunch of them my brain is not working right now but i know you were talking about the person that no longer writes his own books patterson patterson no longer writes his own books he has other writers write them and then he just puts his name on it a lot bigger than those writers well you know you got the name and i feel like that alan wake should just get someone else to write his books i think he all of his problems would be solved if they just slapped on alan wake you know what would have been even more interesting if rick burr sorry rick if you were a ghostwriter instead and this was written by alan wake that'd That'd be be awesome cool inception moment or if it was written by what's the tom zane thomas Thomas zane Zane. that would have been better sorry rick i know by thomas zane i think that would give away the thing though but it, maybe not. And maybe not. Be, yeah. Maybe not. So that that to me would have been too bad. We can't go back like mm-hmm. ten years, <laughs> more than ten years. Yeah. But it's getting old. Years. Um, do you think people should read this book if they like Alan Wake? Uh, okay. So the other thing that I have questions about Alan Wake, and I was like, oh, maybe this book will answer these questions. Absolutely not. Did should not you, at all. Should you read this if you really of like playing Alan Wake? You could. Really? Yeah, I think you could read this book instead. I feel like this instead. might be a little more confusing than the game was, to be honest. It was definitely shorter than playing the game. The game's not that long. The game's not that long. In the first place, but um, how was... Also, okay, if you don't like Alan Wake, I definitely think it gets better in the halfway point. Yeah. Um, I think struggling through chapters like one and two, and then you're then you get it. That's what I've noticed from everyone I've talked to, is it's like, oh, I don't kind of like it. And then you get to the middle and you're like... I can kind of pick up with this game. Once game's you get to down. the Taken and once you find Stucky. That's like the first chapter. No, it's the second chapter. He When he starts talking to you at the, at the, 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 the minor lodge. It was, for me, I think it was with the Hartman thing when I was like, it was way later. Yeah. When the glob started, the glob of darkness started showing up. I was like, I like oh, it. that's way later. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't like it for a long time. And when then, he starts throwing furniture around. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, okay. That, I hated that level. It's hard. The uh, stupid furniture moving around. I think we should also say, before even Alan Wake, our experience with this was oh, we control. control. Which kind of ruins Alan Wake. We I, were so confused the entire time we played Control. And then well, control, I played Alan Wake and I was like, oh. <laughs> control is just like a it's facility owned by, super, like has supernatural stuff in it. And like, it kind of ruins Alan Wake because it's like, oh, Alan Wake. The whole situation with that is... Don't you go to a cabin? Is an that, SCP. <laughs> yeah, it has to do with... It's a little... It's a creature at the bottom of the lake or something. Yeah. So that kind of ruins it. But it then, ruins like... It's a mystery. Because in Control, you also have to use light to be able to shoot things, though. Do you? I just thought you shot triangles at people. Oh, it was part of it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that makes Control... So I'm like, why are we shooting these, like, certain things at these objects and... It just made it make a little sense. So. I definitely liked Alan Wake more than I liked Control. Yeah, Control. We were not a fan. But maybe playing Control again after playing Alan Wake, it might be a little bit better. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. And I won't know because I won't do it. <laughs> so let's get into Alan Wake. We're going to spoil the game and the book. Also, if you did play the game, these first two chapters are identical to what pops up. So sometimes it'll eventually 
things will start being a little different, but it starts off like the game. We so start with a prologue. prologue. Nice. <laughs> Wake hits a hitchhiker. Mm-hmm. Then the hitchhiker disappears. I know what you did last summer. Then it reappears. But he and... realizes that, wait, does, when does he realize it's a character from his book? Is this when he starts talking? Okay. It's like at the tor- like later, later. Because the hitchhiker reappears and is like, oh, you think you could just write me out mm-hmm. of your book? And he's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, because it reappears in Blood and Shadow. Um, then he's like near a street light and then the street lights start to explode. So he has to, he's running towards a cabin in the distance, like a safe haven. And then he's like, oh, the hitchhiker is a character from his first stories. Do you think it's that television show he wrote for? I definitely think it might be part of his Which Alex kind Casey of novels. You mean Twilight Zone? Is? Yeah. The Night thing that keeps popping. Up. Yeah. Night Springs is like a television show he first wrote for, but he was uncredited and it pops up throughout the game yeah. on random televisions. That's also like a trophy thing. I think you have to find all the televisions and turn them on. They're so long though. You're like playing yeah. Alan Wake and then you go to watch Night Springs and you're there for like five minutes <laughs> watching this episode Each of episode. Night Springs. Uh, he, Wake, runs across a rickety bridge. Um, there's a young man in a college letterman's jacket telling him to hurry. And this person is Clay Stewart. So, fun fact about Clay Stewart. Yeah, because I, I don't know. Um, I was. actually, one I thought it was Alex Casey uh, in the, in the Alex game. Casey is the main character of, of his Alan novel. Wake's crime novel. But it's not. It's Clay Stewart. And Clay Stewart wrote the book on Alan Wake. It's called The Alan Wake Files. You only got it if you pre-ordered the collector's edition of Alan Wake back in 2010. Mm-hmm. And it is basically Clay Stewart uh, had dreams about Alan. And in his dreams, him and Alan were like fighting through the dark place together. They're like buddy buddies. They're BFFs. Was he like a high school kid? Why is he wearing a Letterman jacket? No, he's like an old man. Oh. Uh, he has like a wife and kids and he lives far away. Okay. So he's come obsessed with Alan Wake. So he started researching stuff about him. He came to Bright Falls to like do more research on him and in the book that he wrote he has like notes from the fbi agent investigating him nightingale he has interviews maybe that will freaking explain why nightingale is in this book they have interviews with like people in the town about alan and so that's why when um alan talks to him he's like i'm clay you remember me and alan's like no (laughs) (laughs) you stop because they've been fighting in his dreams for a long time they've been fighting in clay's dreams in clay's dreams they've been fighting the dark place together they is he the next died. victim of the Dark Place? I don't know. He's not really a writer, except for he wrote that Alan Wake Files mm-hmm. book, because he became obsessed with learning about him. And then uh, Stuart gets the axe. Yeah, Stuart dies. Hitchhiker's carrying an axe. This could just be Stuart's dream. Oh, uh, but if you die in your dreams. Well, he dies in his dream with Alan all the time. Oh. That's what he talks about. He's like, sometimes Alan dies, sometimes I die. Sometimes we both <laughs> We're die. We're best friends. Only in Me my and this dreams. famous writer. Like, he was watching TV and he's like, oh my God, it's a guy from my dreams. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> uh, Alan is in the cabin. He tries to turn on the light. The hitchhiker's coming. The cabin shakes. The wind blows out the windows. And then there's a light. And there is a deep sea diver. And then there is a... Uh, I have a question because on page five, the deep sea diver like says something to him, but I'm like, the lines are separated by dashes or backslashes. I don't know. Remember like, why? Remember when the deep sea diver talked kind of weird? It goes like this. Is it like because he's underwater? Get an I don't know. Blue, 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 blue. No, he, he did he not just... know. He just talks kind of weird. That beyond the lake he calls home lies a deeper, darker ocean green where the waves are both wilder and more serene. To its port I've been, to its port I've been. So I guess that's the poem that Zane was writing? Yeah, maybe. Because he started writing poems, but you He's find that out later on in the book. And Zane, Thomas Zane is the deep sea diver. Thomas Zane is the deep, he was a diver, he owned the island, he it was, was a called poet. called Diver's I- Island. He was a poet, and he didn't know it. He absolutely knew it, because he wrote... Although, for some reason, in Control, they're like, it's Thomas Zane the poet, or the filmmaker. And I was like, when did he become a filmmaker? I'll never understand that. I don't know. That's confusing. Uh, the light, uh, it says, you are safe in the light. The darkness cannot hurt you there. The light flickers and wake screams is the end of the prologue. Yep. Uh, it's chapter one. Wake up, Alan. It's so funny, because, like... The first chapter of the game in the book, everyone talks super strange, but I think they did this on purpose. 
Because they wanted to make it eerie dreamlike and like, or... and because the way that Alice, his wife, talks to Alan, is so strange. She reminds to me. me of <laughs> kind of the voice actors in like Silent Hill. They did it on purpose. They wanted them to sound like they do in like Twin Peaks, where it's like super weird because it's a people so, are Twin talking Peaks is a soap opera, talking super strangely, and that's why when I first played Chapter One, I think. Me and another friend were like, this voice acting is bad, but we are stupid because it was on purpose. It still could be bad. But... It's not bad. <laughs> like, it's more, like over the top. The more you play it, the better the voice acting gets. Because I think you're right. It's not off-putting to you yet because you, you, like, you've already experienced yeah, it. Yeah, you, you know. And like, everyone's not trying to be creepy. Mm. Like, I feel like this intro sequence, everyone's trying to be kind of like <laughs> weird. Uh, we are on a ferry coming into Bright Falls, the formest, formest forest primeval there is an old man on the ferry and there's a sign that says deer fest is two weeks away which is important deer fest is very important do you think they have to change it's like is there like a number on there that says like yeah there's a number on there and they just replace it they make new banners new because they would have to if it says two weeks away uh because in alan wake 2 deer fest is just happening again and it's like 89th deer fest mm. it's 13 years after alan wake 1 i think I think it was 89. Uh, Pat Main is the old man on the ferry. He is the night host of the local radio show. And we find out that Wake hasn't written a word. In, well, he's written one word. Departure is the name of his book. That's the only thing he's written in two years. Can't write anything. He just stares at his typewriter. Mm. Um, there is also a weird guy in camo pants that creeps Alice out. And, and Alan like, is like, what's your problem, bro? Yeah. Tries to get confrontation. And Alice is like, don't stop, do that. Take a picture by that old man over there. <laughs> so he goes up, take a picture by the old man, because she's a photographer. And he, the old man's like, oh, I'm from the radio station. <laughs> He's the night DJ. I'm Pat May. Hey, you're a famous author. Because there's a cutout of him in a diner, in the only diner. And I'm they sell his time. books in the bookstore. In the yeah. Name, like a lot. And so, yeah, he's like, can I get an interview? And he's like, I'm on a vacation with my wife. Yeah, that's a no. He's like, yeah. oh, you know what? Alan is grumpy AF. <laughs> I also feel poor Pat. Pat ends up being the only person on the radio. <laughs> he yeah. has to work for like four days in a row. Yeah, poor Pat. He doesn't poor deserve Pat. it. But uh. they really wanted to drive home that here's the two things about Alan Wake. Mm -hmm. Alan Wake is grumpy. He hasn't written in a while. And he... Likes his wife a lot. Yes. He really likes his wife. And it, it really comes across in this book way more than it does in the game. Although he's such a jerk to her. <sighs> Only sometimes. In his mind, he yeah. likes his wife. When it, when we go back to, like, scenes from the past between the two of them. The one time he was a jerk to her, other than the past, uh, in this in this game, he really pays for it dearly. Yeah. So. <laughs> so we get to Bright Falls... And they have to go to a diner to pick up the keys for their cabin from someone called Carl Stuckey. And it's the Deer Diner is the Oh, place Deer of. Diner. Oh, Deer Diner. Um, so Alice is going to drop off Alan. She's going to go down the street to at the gas pump down the street. Yeah. You Rick. That. <laughs> I, I had to make sure my thing wasn't skipping when I was listening. So I was like, why did you say that twice? Down the street. Rick. Yeah, down, as opposed to the up the street. The one gas pump up the street. Maybe you should learn to write. Rick. <laughs> It's weird. Don't ever say that. Um, in the diner, there is a waitress. Her name is Rose, and she is Alan Wake's number one fan. Number one fan. I'm sure that's her cardboard cut out of him. I'm sure she stole it. No, she did. Well, she asked She asked them if she could have it. She stole it. She asked the publishers, is what she said. Yeah, she has a... She has a huge old crush yep. on Alan Wake. Then there's Rusty, and he is a sheriff deputy. He's a park ranger. He's not a deputy. Deputy. Park ranger. They call him a deputy, though. They say he's a park ranger. Yeah. Ranger Rusty. Park deputy ranger Rusty. Yeah. So he's a deputy ranger. Okay. He's a park ranger. He's sitting there drinking coffee, talking about how great this coffee is, and he won't shut up about it. Yes, because he's in love with Rose, and she has the best coffee. Pure Colombian. <laughs> then there's two old geezers. Yeah. Thor and Odin. Sorry, Tor. Tor and Odin. Odin Othin. Anderson. And they want uh, 
Alan to play B2, which is the coconut song. The coconut song. Is that put the lime, lime in, in the, the coconut, coconut and drink it all up? Put the lime mm-hmm. in the coconut. Then there is an elderly woman who stood at the entrance to the dimly lit corridor holding up a battery powered lantern. And this lady, I think she's supposed to be the log lady from Twin Peaks. I don't know. I didn't watch Twin Peaks. There's a in Twin Peaks. There's a lady with. A I only she consume things. stuff inspired by Twin Peaks. I don't ever consume <laughs> Twin Peaks on its own. Twin Peaks could not. I, I know they came out with. They were like, so many years later, they brought the actors back and they they did a reunion reunion type of thing. I don't think it did as well. I don't think you could do Twin Peaks today. I don't think it would be as successful. Well, as people was. try in, in video do. game format all the time. Um, I did play Deadly Premonition before I played this one, and that one felt way more Twin Peaks. Than also, one did. Carl's in the bathroom and they're Alan like, it's just gonna go for it. They're like, it was in the bathroom and he's like, I don't want to hang out with anyone in this room right now. I am leaving. And the lady at the door is like, don't go in the hallway. Uh-huh. It's dark and the darkness is bad. And he's like, whatever. <laughs> Then there is another lady in the hallway in an all black dress. Um, and it's she's like a the, veil on, like she's going to a funeral. Yeah, Carl is taken sick and he gives Wake the key and the map. I hope you enjoy your stay in my cabin. Mm. Dun dun dun. So Don't take keys from little old ladies in back, black dresses in the bathroom next to the bathroom. In the hallway to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. time for three. On their way to the cabin, Wake and Alice stop off uh, to so that because Alice thinks she saw a UFO in the woods, which is not in the game. This is weird. It's not in the game. Yeah, they replaced the scene. This comes later. Something similar happens yeah. in the trailer park with the boat that falls down. I think maybe I'm thinking. I says I just read the Raven Boys, and there's an old convertible like car in that one too. Maybe I'm just confusing. Maybe. My media. Yeah, but they replaced uh, a pre- a scene later on with this scene where Alice and, and Alan are in the woods looking at this car that is in the middle of a tree, like it's been dropped there, mm-hmm. and they think that that's weird. And Alan hates the woods. And we find out that Cauldron Lake is a caldera, so it was, there's volcanic activity there that caused it to have a crater and... I mean, which there is Crater Lake. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. But mm. in the middle of not or on the lake. Apparently, originally the when they were working on Alan Wake uh, and it was going to be like an open world survival game, the volcano was going to be like the main threat. And that was going to be the erupt. Yeah. You had to go collect mm. like supplies to survive and stuff. You're not surviving. But then though. they changed it. Because there's more things than lava that happens when volcanoes erupt. It's the, the gas and the ash that well, changed it. causes problems. And um, there is something called a bird leg cabin. I don't... Why is it called bird leg cabin? Baba on, Yaga. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense. But the whole Baba Yaga stuff comes in way later, though. Yeah, but they talk about the witch and yeah. stuff like that, so... That makes more sense, because... You're welcome. I was like, <laughs> is it just because it's on still? Because it's on the water? They said it was on sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, questions are being answered. Um, the cabin is uh, the cabin is on an island that's connected with a wooden bridge, and then he gets a phone call from the best character in this book. She only likes the comedic relief character. Barry. Uh, he has a call from his agent Barry, and they. Uh, our best friends. Apparently they were friends for a long time before he became an agent. He became a writer. So match made in heaven. Yes. I guess. Anyway, Alice and Barry don't like each other. No. That's not really that important. But they both have but... the same goal, which is to get him to write. Yeah. So he has not such a grumpy pants. Yeah, so he, sh- he hangs up on Barry. <laughs> Alice is afraid of the dark, so Alan has to make sure the generator for the house is on before it gets dark. Yeah, so there's a generator and a shed in the back and the island like even in the game the island's pretty small it just has a house on it and like that's there's not much yeah there's like a little green grass and a trail and that's about it yeah but it is a two-story cabin it's kind of a nice nice cabin cabin island uh uh, as he goes out to the generator you see a stump with tz plus bj carved into it and now it's like i'm gonna show my wife later (laughs) we can carve our initials in here too (laughs) oh and i I, that's another question so he turns on the generator, which means there was no power going to the cabin, right? Yeah. 
So there's a refrigerator in the cabin. Yeah, there's probably nothing in it. So it's a rental cabin. Yeah. So they probably like you know. You gotta wait for it to like cool down then before you put stuff in. It. And then did they did not stop for groceries or anything? No, they didn't. Um, and he was at the diner. He could have gotten something to go. What are they eating? He, he didn't want anything. He was so <laughs> like, I don't want to deal with my biggest fan over here. He's so mean to Rose. Yeah. Um, in the bookshelf, there are books from Thomas Zane. And he's like, oh, I've never heard of him before. <laughs> yeah. But that's the TZ on the stump. Um, Alice is very, very, very afraid of the dark. Mm-hmm. I bet they have to sleep with a nightlight. <laughs> Uh, they turn on the radio, and the guy that they met on the... <laughs> Pat Main. He's just like, oh, I just met a famous author. And then Rose is like, it's Alan Wake. <laughs> I just saw him. And Alan's like, great. <laughs> My cover has been blown. He's like, fantastic. We have how long in this place? And then Alice has a surprise for him. Yep. What do you think about this surprise? I... <laughs> I also don't think it should have been the first night. Oh, you should have, like, eased into yeah. it? Because they're there to be on a vacation to spend yeah. time together. And so... The... It is a little bit two-faced. Yeah. To be and like, also, I'm like... Thanks for coming on this vacation with me, Alan. But then it's When like, did she kidding. put it in the cabin? When he was doing he the generator? doing the generator thing, I guess. How do you hide that in the car? In your suitcase. Just mm. a suitcase thing with a heavy typewriter yeah. in it. So the surprise is there is a study and uh, his typewriter's there because she lugged his typewriter all the way from New York and put it there so he could write. Mm. Alan. <laughs> she also says there's a doctor in town. Yeah, so she wants to like commit him to this doctor. Dr. Hartman. That treats creatives because they were talking on the phone together. And <laughs> Alan gets super pissed. I think I would be pissed, too. Yeah, I don't think that bringing up the typewriter where he's already pissed mm-hmm. and then bringing up the fact that you're like, let's go to this, like, hospital for That's why creative. we're here. <laughs> That's why I chose this place. So you could go get So care. Alan is mad, and he pretty much storms out. <laughs> and then the he's cabin. on, like, the bridge, and he's like, oh, I'm so mad. Oh, that was rude of me. And then he's like, oh, I should go back and Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't get very far before he's like... All right. Yeah. <laughs> then the lights go out, and Alice screams. Yeah, the generators um, stop working. Um, yeah, Alice is screaming. Alan runs back in, doesn't see her, but hears water sounds. And a splash. I hear a splash, and then uh, Wake dro- drove in after her is the end of that chapter. Yeah, he can see her underwater, and so he jumps in. Chapter four. In the water, there is a light, and a man in an old deep-sea diving suit. And then he's he hears sounds of typewriters like yeah. the whole while he's book. diving down, yeah, like the whole book that pops up, yeah, that'd be insane. I'd Just go crazy. Typing noises, <laughs> ASMR for <laughs> crazy. <laughs> As I'm going insane, <laughs> so Alan wakes up and he's in a crashed car. It um, is nice that he leaves a note. <laughs> he doesn't do that in the game. That's the thing that's... Like, wife's missing. He goes through his luggage, which is strewn everywhere. He has a head injury, too. Yeah. Um, he goes through his wife's luggage. He leaves too. a note, but then the car topples yeah, over nice. the cliff, so... It's nice that he left a note. It, it didn't matter. Um, he sees oh, a the, paper. In oh. the trunk, in his, his wife's bag, is the book by Dr. Hartman. And he's like, I hate that guy already. <laughs> Uh, he sees a paper fall from the sky. It's and... the first of the departure pages. So yeah. the departure is the name of the book. He named his book before he... Maybe that's part of his creative process. Had any... You know? What was the name of his other book? Because I thought it was Sudden funny. Sudden Stop. Sudden Stop was the name of his last book, and then he can't write again. I'm like... Oh. I thought that might have been a reference to the... Because they made Max Payne, the end of Max Payne. Mm. Where the... So that kind of sounds like the Sudden Stop, he killed Alex Casey. Da da da. Um, the page is blood dripped from the blood of an axe. What? That was the quote that was on the page. Where are you? Oh, I see. On his unwritten manuscript, yeah. written, because it's right there. He find, finds a paper and then he's like, it says wake. <laughs> do you think he's reading it and he's like, that's awful? Or do you think he's reading it and he's like, it's pretty good. I wrote something. I yeah, wrote something. That's pretty good, actually. Or Have you like, ever written something Ooh. and you like go back and find something that you wrote a long time ago and were like, I wrote this. I have no memory of writing this. I've definitely done that. Well, you're an Alan Wake. <laughs> I'm like, when did I write this? <laughs> my handwriting. Like, 
I don't remember writing this at all. He has no opinion on his manuscript. No, he's <laughs> like, honest. I started this book? What? Crazy. Um, and then this is where, at the end of the chapters, the pages start appearing. And the first one has to do with Blaine and Asaka. Yeah, I don't know anything about Who that. Who are these people? I, I don't know. And it's on, like, page 40. Oh, I'm like, what book is this? It's... He gets attacked by somebody before chapter five, but I can't read my handwriting. <laughs> Um, I think I said maniac. He gets attacked by a maniac. He, he like he's runs. like a shadow, and he starts running because he's in the woods. And oh, he sees a guy with an axe because he just read the page about a guy with an axe, and then he sees that, and he's like, "Uh oh!" And then he runs away because by chapter five, he's still running. He's, he's like, going to "I gotta go camp. to the gas station." Yeah, yeah. He's right. trying to get because you can see the gas station from the road, but he has to go through the forest to get there, and there's all the shadows, and of course he has a concussion, so. Yeah. Um, this is the logging camp. Yeah, he sees a logging camp in the distance. He's like, there has to be people on a phone there. Hello. <laughs> so he uh, hears yelling, Wake runs towards it, and it's a hunter who's bleeding on the ground. Oh, before that, though. What? Which is my favorite. He has to get into the logging camp. So he's like, I'm going to climb this fence. And he's like, nope, can't do that. And oh. then there's a log that's like accidentally fell into the fence and he goes to climb the log and he falls off the log. There's a low log climbing in <laughs> Wake. I was like, that definitely happened in the game. The game, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he sees Carl Stucky with an axe and he's like glitching. I, uh, the, the, one of my favorite parts is Stucky's like dialogue. <laughs> yeah, so when like the bad guys or the Taken, the Shadow Men like die and then become shadow men they kind of just repeat phrases that they would say a lot so it's all about because he's the one that rents out all the cabins premium cabins for sale at bright Falls. and then he talks about like get your oil change restaurant places yeah replace (laughs) your oil and then yeah he kills the hunter with the axe yeah the poor hunter is like stucky you know me why are you doing this and stucky just kills him yeah there is this is when we see the hunter shoots at stucky but stucky doesn't die yeah it's like what the crap uh there's another page it talks about the taken and yeah uh wake runs into the lumber mill office after seeing that because gotta get away from stucky and there's a flashlight and a gun and a page and he calls 911 (laughs) And that's disconnected. Yeah, because Stucky broke the mm-hmm. thing. Stucky then gets into a Wait, bulldozer. No, while he's talking to the deputy, Stucky mm-hmm. disconnects the phone line and then starts pushing the trailer that Alan is in with a bulldozer towards the ravine. This is where it doesn't wake, like, go out the window or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he jumps out. And then Stucky and the trailer, and the trailer go over the cliff. Go over the cliff. Bye, Stucky. Finally, Wake can read the manuscript he got from mm-hmm. the trailer. So he knows that he has to shine the light at them in order to shoot them. He kills two other with the flashlight and the revolver that he picked up. And then the end of this chapter, the page is about Alice seeing a creepy lady in black at the cabin. Mm. Which all of these pages are disjointed and in no particular order. So it was Yeah, thanks, interesting. Thomas. <laughs> Chapter six, Alan remembers Alice's fear of the darkness. He sees a glowing paint. This is when we see the the paint thing. Oh, with the... With, um... uh, and almost walks off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is almost to Stucky's gas station. Stucky is now there babbling about stuff. Uh, um, the woods are shaking. Things start shaking, too. Yeah, there's tremors. And this happens throughout the game as well. He has to cross the river in order to get to the gas station. But it's like 10, 15, 20, it's like crazy high above where he the water is. He also fights Ducky. So he has a pipe wrench now. I guess he didn't need the axe anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, axe probably got stuck in the hunter. And he well, was he, like, so he has to cross the river to get to, um, and he goes on a tree to cross the river to get to the gas station. And he sees more messages on the rock. Then Stucky is, is back giving dining advice. Okay. And this is where the He pipe crosses is. a tree. Then they fight. Paul makes once. the best hot dogs, by the way. Belly Buster. And we find out that Ducky doesn't eat salad. <laughs> this is all, okay. all the stuff that he's saying as he's fighting. And doesn't he hit Alan, like, in the shoulder? Yeah, he does. With a pipe wrench. Oof. Uh, he shoots Stucky, and uh, he dissolves. But he, like, keeps shooting him until he has no more bullets. Because he's scared. Yeah. 
Uh, we find out that Deerfest is in seven days, so Alice has been missing for one week, and Alan does not remember what has happened in that week. Um, we He turns on the radio, and Maurice Horton is on now, and he's like, hey, if you found my dog Toby, he's missing. Which, there's a page about Toby, and that pissed me off. What, could he dies? Yeah, don't kill the dog. And then they killed the dog? Don't kill the dog. I feel like that page about the dog being killed is in the uh, nightmare mode because I feel like I never found that. Yeah. But I do remember the Pat Main thing being like, I lost my dog, Toby. Uh, there's a TV. We turn it on. There's a man in a wood paneled room, desk and typing. And it, he says, I'll keep writing. Alan Wake dials 911. He also finds a manuscript about Rose and Rusty. That is the page at the end of the chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, Rusty loves Rose. Rose thinks he's just okay. He's nice. No. But she wants that Hollywood love. You know, everyone's got a type. So Alan Wake in chapter seven is now at the police station. Yeah, but he's getting healed by the doctor. Dr. Nelson. Not Dr. Hartman. We'll see yeah. him. We'll see time. him. Uh, the sheriff is there. Her name is Sarah Breaker. Uh, we get a memory of Wake remembers Alice's moment in the dark i think this was at their apartment right yeah this is when the clicker shows up yeah. the first time because this is when he tells not alice. to be confused with the last of us clicker it is like a light switch yeah this is like an actual disconnected light switch and he's like oh, i'll give it to you my mom used to give it to me when i was afraid of the dark so you can click on it and feel better anyway snap back to reality <laughs> Back to reality. Um, she's like, are you sleeping? And he's like, I wasn't sleeping. I was dreaming. Wow. Like, oh, what? Gross. Uh, then he finds out that there is no island on Cauldron Lake. So the place that he was staying where he lost his wife stopped existing in the yeah, 70s. In the game, Sarah Breaker shows up at the gas station. I don't think he called her, did he? Did he call 911? Or did she just show up? Well, they found his car. Yeah. And so I think she was looking for him. And then, because he's like, oh, I can't tell her anything because I sound insane. Yeah. And also he had to hide his gun and stuff in the gas station because the cops were there. But also she takes, Tara Brigger takes him to the lake to be like, look, yeah. there's nothing there. But in this one, she's like, I'm not even going to take you to there because mm-hmm. it doesn't exist. Be like, also, we can't leave the scene yet because other people have to show up. Um, Wake gets a phone call. Mm-hmm. And it says, stop talking to the cops or your wife is dead. He hears Alice's voice and says, meet at Elderwood Park at midnight. At Lover's Peak. Lover's Peak. If you ever want to see your wife again, no cops. Um, we see the lady with the lantern again. She's fixing all the lights. They dragged in a guy named Schneider who is talking about the dark. And which, he beat up his friend Danny, which... Doesn't come up in this book again, but comes up in the game. So, Snyder is Wade, and he is on one of the pages later on, because I had to look it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he Snyder, on one of the pages, he goes to the Anderson farm to steal their booze, oh, and nice. then he sees a man on the porch. And that's the only time you hear about Wade Snyder. In the game, like, Snyder and Danny come back. Yeah. And, like, Aren't they in there when they get arrested again and the Nightingale's taken? Um, they're like, Don't no, they're us. in a cabin. Oh. Spoiler for Alan Wake, because um, Danny is a Taken, and this is what this guy's talking about. Because he saw his friend become a Taken, so he beat him up at a bar, and then he gets arrested for beating his friend up. Uh, but Danny takes revenge and, like, kills Snyder later on when you're just wandering in a cabin. Oh, yeah. And then you have to fight Danny on your own. Um, then Dr. Emil Hartman comes in to pick up the Anderson brothers, which, why are they in the jail? I don't know. Or do they just come into town and he's just checking out on them? Maybe they got arrested. They seem like they're the at type. the diner, yeah. Too much coconut song. Um, so now that Alan Wake doesn't have a cabin because the lake doesn't exist. He's yeah, he's like, like, I don't have a place to Go stay. to Elder World, Elderwood National Park. That's where the cabins are. And ask to see Rusty, which you've already met before. And yeah, so that's they're what like, the, uh, the deputy told him to do. Uh, Hartman, though, suggests his uh, Cauldron Lake Lodge for crazy people. And so Alan Wake punches him in the face. As yeah. he should. He's like, I talked to your wife. And he's like, what'd you say about my wife? <laughs> huh? You punch him in the face. and um... Which at the time is extreme. But once you find out more about Hartman, you're like, that dude deserved it. No, I totally I get it. <laughs> my favorite part about Alan is how impulsive that dude is. Um, Sarah has to hold him back because he's about to punch him some more. Yeah. Uh, then Barry Wheeler shows up. 
That's his agent. Don't you touch my client. I'm going to sue you. Uh, a call comes in about the logging camp. And Alan's like, we got to leave. <laughs> oh, there. also, uh, Sarah asked him while he was getting all of his stuff back from her office. She was like, have you seen Stucky? <laughs> he's been missing. We've called him and he's been missing. And Alan's like, no. <laughs> Uh, the page at the end talks about the Taken. Taken retains echoes. I can't read my handwriting. Writer is merely something. So they wake left in Barry's rental car and Alan in chapter eight tells Barry about Alice's kidnapping and they stop at Stucky's to grab the gun Alan left. Um, then they go to the Bird Lake cabin and it's not. Yeah, and Barry's like, yeah, let's go take a nap. (laughs) Basically, Barry doesn't believe him, but Mm -hmm. he is down for anything, so he'll They go to rent the cabin. Rose is there, and she mentions Night Spring Vortex. She's like, sorry about your wife, but Bright Falls is just weird. (laughs) Yeah, so we get Night Springs again is is like the Twilight Zone show that Mm -hmm. Alan... Wrote for and so you'll get. I wrote down everything every time it popped up because it shows up there. Um, she tells us that the there's a dog. I think it was Rusty's dog. Yeah. got hurt last night. Got all tore up. Uh, um, so... they get the last cabin. I don't remember a lot of people being there in the game. But there's cars parked in front of every. Cabin. They're all just taken. Yeah, but yeah. And they get a map. Um, the page at the end of the chapter is, uh, to fly, find the supply trunk, which is in the game is the highlighted yeah. neon glow in the dark light. You can only see it with your flashlight. Yeah. They drove to the cabin in chapter nine. They have a little shower and a nap and Alan dreams about Alice. And then Alan wakes up to prep to go to Lover's Peak, talk to the kidnapper and buried is worried about him. So he made him a triple decker PB&J sandwich. Yeah. Um, we also get the first mention of the Blackbirds. They preceded the Taken attack, so that is... They're annoying, come. and yes. I hate them. They're awful. And um, we find out a lot of the campers have gone missing, and be aware of the bear traps, which are awful yeah. as well. And you can only see with the flashlight. Yeah. The page at the end is about Sheriff Breaker, and uh, Agent Nightingale shows up. So chapter 10, Alan is walking when a tremor hits. He hears screaming at the visitor center and he's like, I gotta go help. Because Alan's trying to get to Lover's Lane to meet with the kidnapper. Yeah. So the center is destroyed. Rusty's car like ran through the windows. Um, And Alan finds Rusty bleeding on the floor. Who's attacked by a man with an axe. Yeah, a logger. Everything that just happened... It just, the way that was on the page I found. Yeah, Rusty read one of the manuscript pages about the logger attack and is very confused. He also shot at the logger and he wouldn't die. No surprise there. Um, So he's super busted up. So Alan's like, uh, where's your first aid kit? Yeah. He's like, oh, it's in that other room where you're not going to be able to see me as I die. But he doesn't want Alan to leave. Yeah. But Alan is so like, I got to get this first aid kit. You should have left Rusty with the flashlight. You should have left him with something. Yeah. For sure. Because um, Rusty's not there when he comes back. Yeah, he goes and he to go get the first aid kit, he has another trimmer and he comes back and there's like drag marks where Rusty's body used to be. And Wake sees a bear trap. Mm-hmm. When Alan walks outside, Rusty jumps down off the roof, axe in hand, and they fight. And he's talking about the laws. That's his glitch. Yeah. Um... He has to take a cable car to go to Lover's Lane, and it says use at your own risk. <laughs> yeah, there's like two cable cars in the game, and they both break. Yeah. I thought at least, because maybe there's like three, like one of them would work. Mm. But every single cable car. I know, you come up to the cable car in the game, and you're like, busted. great, yeah. here we go again. Because he's attacked by birds. The cable car breaks. Mm-hmm. Um, it causes Alan to lose his gun. Yes, that a taken uh Kicks it away from him. Yeah. But somebody shoots at the Taken. And then the page at the end of this one is Ellen listening to trees fall. So Ellen is the young scientist who has no importance in this game whatsoever. I don't even think she's in the the game. I don't even know. I don't... Like, that was a weird thing that happens later on with the trailer park. Yeah, because she, like, they pop up and it's like, oh, well, that's what that person is. Why is it in the departure book and why is it... 
in here at all. I don't know. Confusing. Uh, chapter 11 starts with, you're welcome, dipshit. So yeah, some random hick saved Alan. It was the creepy guy on the ferry, and he's also the kidnapper. Yep, camo pants. Um, we'll learn later that his name is Mott. Yes. Last because I just, I was tired of writing random hick, so... <laughs> You don't find out till way like, later. Way later. In fact, I had to like when they say, "Oh, Mott was working for him." I was like, "What? I'm sorry." And Mott's then applesauce. Yeah, Mott's a weird name. Is that a first name or last? Name? That's a last name. Oh. Um. So they, they fight off the. I, kept, I called them camel pants. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they fight off the taken camel pants. Demands the manuscript. Uh. He knows. He knew, knew that they would survive the taken. Uh fight because he already read about it this was an interesting way to change up the gameplay though is because you lost your gun so you basically had to trust in this kidnapper and he guy. uses flares so and you yeah, get a new weapon you use flares to like back <laughs> uh <laughs> the monsters light. and then he would shoot at them so you have to trust this random guy <laughs> um Alan picks up the fact that said he said we need the manuscript, so he's not working on his own, mm-hmm. and um, so he, he wants to trade the manuscript for his wife. And so Alan's like, "Give me seven days." He's like, "I'll give you two. And he's like, <laughs> "Your wife is missing," and you're like, "I'll have her be missing for another week." <laughs> I need seven days of his manuscript, so he's only gonna give him two days to finish the manuscript. And then uh, he's like, "I'm gonna meet us at the coal mine." When you're done, mm-hmm. and we'll exchange. Um, I think, did the kidnapper headbutt Alan, or did Alan headbutt the kidnapper? The earth starts to shake again. There's visions of him typing. Because... Uh, Wake, the, wakes up and starts running. The kidnapper runs away, and uh, he Alan gets the kidnapper's gun. So he goes back to Barry, but gets attacked by ravens, and then he flashlights them to death. Yes. Um, Pat Main is on the radio with Dr. Nelson. Barry calls. There's birds on the porch, and so that was awful. That was also... A- Stupid level. The page at the end of this chapter is Stucky, and he's like, something's not, something doesn't feel right. He's being touched by the darkness. Um, So back at the cabin, we're in chapter 12. Wake tries to write. Barry is around town asking about Camel Pants Man. Does he not find out about him at all? I guess not. Because he doesn't come back with any information. But Barry does get a call from Rose saying that she has a bunch of the manuscript pages, so mm-hmm. they're going to her trailer park to talk to her. Oh, so, like, the fact that the sheriff comes in and they're like, Rusty must have been taken by a bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> All right. Um, also, um, on their way to the trailer park... Um, Wade gets a call from the cops saying that FBI agent Nightingale wants to talk to him, and he's like... Okay, yeah, maybe later, though. <laughs> yeah, he also finds more pages of the manuscript in a drawer that he, like, kicks because he's mad. Yeah. Um, N- Nightingale doesn't make any sense to me at all in this, besides the fact that he's an inciting incident. I like him I don't get why he's there. He's impulsive and super weird. And drunk. And time. drunk. You learn more about him and his, like, partner in this book. I feel like that was in his room in the game. I don't think it was. Because I, I didn't see anything about it. Um him his like partner becomes a taken so he becomes a drunk yeah fbi agent man and his partner was missing right something like that his partner was getting weird talked about the darkness and he goes missing yeah and then he's like oh as soon as i heard about al but i was like alan wake's been missing for a week how did you hear about it what is happening it has to be the same thing with the the guy who had the dreams of him you know maybe he just read the pages everyone's dreaming about alan wake it had the pages and he read it and it freaked him out too much so he just was like i'm going to kill alan wake yeah, for sure i'm gonna shoot on sight alan wake um so as Bar- barry mentions the night springs episode so that's where we find out about night springs um he also heard that the an indian tribe considers cauldron lake the gateway to hell okay yeah they are going to rose's house to get the manuscript she lives in a trailer park and uh, Wake tells Barry about a, if you're ever in a general store. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I read this page. Look up and there's flares, I think is what it was. Oh, or... okay. So he's giving him a heads up. Uh, and that's when Barry gets the call from the sheriff of the FBI. They want to speak to him. Um, Randolph is the owner of the park and he takes them to Rose, but Rose is a good girl. So watch yourself. 
They talk about Thomas Zane as they're walking to the trailer park. The writer, the poet, the diver, and how he owned the lake. And mm-hmm. he it sunk and he died. And so did his lover, Barbara Jagger. She drowned a week before the island sunk in a volcanic earthquake eruption something in 1970. They also talk about Cynthia Weaver, who is the crazy lady with the lights that we met at the diner, who knew Zane and Barbara. She, she was the yeah. rose of their relationship. <laughs> she writes the... Uh, so. About all that stuff. Um, also, Barbara Jagger has a reputation around town as the scratching hag or granny claws. And then Baba Yaga later. They, oh. they didn't bring up, because in the game, um, they're, like a boat fell onto the trailer park. And they're like super weird. Yeah, because you have to walk around boat it. boat came nowhere. But this isn't in... No. And then we find out Ellen is the Some young girl. random lady comes out in a robe yeah. complaining about how her daughter's missing because she had to do chores. Um, it's like, check the library. That's super weird, and I don't know why that was a part that, of it. She was the girl in the manuscript page. Yeah, but, like, why, Rick? Yeah, that was weird. Why? I don't know. Um, anyway, Rose let them in. That's the end of chapter 12. <laughs> the page, uh, for decades, the darkness wore Barbara Jagger's skin. Um, the rock star brothers stirred it, but it really has a thing for writers. Mm. Chapter 13, Rose is all zoned out and unfocused. I put, don't drink the coffee. Yeah, Rose made them coffee and drugged them and uh, didn't have any of the manuscript. She's like, I'll be your muse, Alan. And uh, then Alan passes out and so does uh, Barry. Yeah. Uh, Wake dreams of the deep sea diver. He says, you need to turn on the lights. The old lady in black is there. Creepy as hell. Mm. Uh, She says, you need to finish what you started. Alan wakes up in Rose's bedroom. Back to work, boy. In in the game, there's like pictures of Alan and she has a whole shrine. Um, Rose is rocking back and forth in the kitchen. (laughs) Poor Rose. Yeah. Yeah, She said I could be his muse. Barry is KO'd on the couch and Alan only has 12 hours left to write the manuscript. So, uh, unlike the game where he just kind of leaves Barry there and is like, he'll be fine. Yeah, he puts him in a wheelbarrow. He puts him in a wheelbarrow. That's going to be so hard to do. And wheelbarrows him towards the car, but the cops are there. Um, he and finds so another manuscript page. The police show up and it's, yeah, Nightingale, who is drunk and trying to arrest. And he's like, I'm arresting you. And he's like, on what charge? He's like, a charge of, I hate you so much. <laughs> I still don't know what the <laughs> Uh, he leaves, like, I don't, this is, I love this scene in the game because he basically pushes the manager, because the manager called the cops yeah, on right off, yeah. Because they, they were in were there for way a too long. long time. So he pushes the manager like knocking on the door, like. Of the, like, of the cops who were shooting at him <laughs> and then runs into the woods. But in the book. Barry's still asleep, by the way. He just leaves the wheelbarrow and runs backwards yeah. into the woods. And they shoot. Um, the Open page fire on this one is Alice is in the dark. Doesn't from, in the game? Doesn't from here he runs to the radio station? Or? Yeah, he runs to the radio station from here. The radio station is not in the book. Yeah, we just hear poor Pat who has to take up everyone's poor shift because everyone's missing. He's got a lot of guests though that just show up, and he's like, oh, I'm "By so this scene, you've read a manuscript page in the book that says that you're going to get arrested." Yeah. So I was like, oh, now's the time we get arrested. But yep. no, when Nightingale opened fire and he and Alan had to, like, run away, I was like, oh, my God. We're running around in the woods. Uh, they're looking for Wake in the woods. Cops uh, are getting attacked by the darkness. She says, you have no grounds to arrest Mr. Wake. Yeah. He's like, I don't care. Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. A deputy is being attacked. A police car dropped from the sky. Um, just before dawn, Wake makes it to a ranger station. Yeah, the radio's on. Pat Main is talking about gunshots at the trailer park while Alan eats cookies. <laughs> then he finally goes to the coal mine. There's, like, food in there. And he's yeah. just, like, eating it. Was well, the ranger, listening, ranger station, yeah. Listening to the radio. He leaves a note about all the things that he ate. <laughs> That's nice. With his name on it. Very polite. Mm-hmm. Uh, he grabs flares and a map. Uh, Walt Snyder... That's oh, so we do see him again. He was on the radio. Oh, talks about how weird it is outside. So he's in here three times. Uh, the page at the end of the chapter, um, I put WTF, Bill. Your brother went missing, but at least you got fed. I, I, Bill and Clara, who are these people? I don't know. So Clara is missing. 
And she got, she went missing in the middle of making dinner and her husband is having like a hissy fit. Because he's like, my brother went missing when I was young, but at least I got dinner. That's the page. Wow. I was like, what a weird. Yeah, I don't know what the deal with that is. Page. So chapter 15, Wake's driving a car that he stole. Yeah, he stole a car. He waited 15 minutes for somebody to come out and he's like, must be taken. And then he takes the car. <laughs> It runs out of gas, though, so serves him right. Yeah, and then he's walking the rest of the way. Um, he hears... He made it to the thing, but he hears Alice's voice, and he follows it into a mine shaft. So the the mining camp is a ghost town. 32 miners... There's a plaque. 32 miners lost their lives during the volcanic eruption in 1970. This is not what happened in the game, though. You actually show up to the meeting spot, and then the guy gives you a call, and he's like, yeah, I'm not meeting you there. yeah. You're, like, waiting in the museum. You came early, mm-hmm. and you're waiting in there. There's, like, a... Is there a... I guess it was a call. I was, like, I thought it was, yeah. like, a radio He gives something. you, like, a phone call, and he's, like, yeah, we're gonna meet somewhere else, actually, and then you throw a hissy fit, and I think you end up, in order to, like, leave the area to get to the next yeah, place... Yeah, because it's trapped. It's, like, locked. You have to go down. You gotta go through There's the no power, no light. Shaft. Tunnels go to Cauldron Lake, which you end up there later, right? Isn't that where Alice ends up? Or, like, you have to go in the water or something. Mm-hmm. I remember going down there and having to go, like, in Cauldron yeah. Lake. I remember being in the mine shafts and being, like, because there's multiple directions you could go. And once you jump down, you can't jump back up. So so the uh, missing miners show up and they uh, emerge and attack him. Oh, yeah. The kidnapper, um, get he gets a call from the kidnapper after he gets attacked by mm-hmm. these guys and fights them, which is different than the game. And he says, Midnight at Mirror Peak will swap the manuscript for your wife. I'm changing the rules. So, uh... Alan just lays down and takes a Yeah, nap. he's like, it's funny. I'm safe. I'm gonna take a nap. I haven't slept in a long time. Oh my god, this guy just walking around just eating people's cookies and taking naps <laughs> on the ground. He's having it rough. It's a hard knock life for Alan. Yeah. <laughs> um, he ends up going to the spot and he sees the kidnapper and the kidnapper is talking to someone. It is a woman in black. Mm-hmm. And he is like eating for his life we never had alice he gets jerked off the platform yeah and starts this lady like shadows. creates a storm and throws our boy kidnapper mott off the platform and throws alan into the lake because it's still super windy and he shoots off of a off a flare before he is submerged in the water he yeah. sees alice in the water the woman in black is pulling her down the flare is gone and he sees a man Glowing with light, and his hand is outstretched. Um, Jesus. <laughs> the page at the end of this chapter is it's 1976, and the Anderson brothers are making moonshine on their farm. The best moonshine ever, according to them. Yeah, made out of the creepy lake water. Mm-hmm. Also, like, okay, so their whole thing is the old gods of Asgard. Why aren't they making mead? <laughs> True. Um, I thought this was the weird uh, New York dream sequence, but nope, it's... He wakes up and he's in Hartman's clinic. Yeah, who kidnapped and drugged him and says his wife has died. His wife has died. You've been here for a while. You're having a psychotic break, so Alan. So he's gaslighting the crap out of this guy. He gave him like antidepressants and tranquilizers to keep him and then susceptible to his, his... Nurse Birch is a big... I also like dude. that Alan knows that. He's like, mm, he must be tricking me with these specific drugs. Yeah, I've taken these drugs <laughs> I feel before. influenced. I'm a writer. I've taken these drugs mm-hmm. before. Um, yeah, he, he says, you've been here a while and Alice is dead. And- it's all a dream. Who's Alice? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she never existed, Alan. You're insane. Um, at the clinic, we meet Emerson, a patient who worked on video games. Yeah, that's just a jab at game developers. <laughs> yeah burnout the people who are making the game because <laughs> also they were kind of rude about it too they're like it just makes video games makes disgusting video games are super gross and um, that guy was funny because in was in the game he was, he was like hiding and then he like pops <laughs> out he's like i scared you <laughs> um the anderson brothers are there the hartman tells us they have dementia and then there's a storm's coming so hartman has to get the generators ready it broke trial out of his train al Broke Al out of his trance mm-hmm. because uh, Hartman was like actually scared that there's a storm coming. And like, then Uh-oh. he's like, you should go back to your room and write. Yeah. You need to write. And I'm like, what? It'll help you. You should write. Um, Talking to the Anderson brothers, a.k.a. the old gods of Asgard, a.k.a. Poets of the Fall. Uh, 
<laughs> they confuse Wake with Thomas Thomasine, and Alan just goes with it. And then they're like, you should go to our farm. Yeah, we left a message for you there. They give him a manuscript page. Um, they also call uh, the Lady Baba Yaga. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a better nickname for Barbara. Barbara Yaga. <laughs> Barbara, yeah. Baba um, Yaga. So after giving him the manuscript page, the Anderson brothers attack a nurse with like a toy hammer. Was it a toy hammer? I thought it was a real hammer. I think in the game it was a toy hammer. Yeah. But they just, they like hit it really hard because Alan even says like when he patted him on the back, he was like, oh, they got some strength. That yeah. hurt. <laughs> so Sinclair is the nurse person. And so uh, Alan Wake is able to get the keys because he has to go into Hartman's office because he knows that he took the manuscript pages off of him. So yeah, he needs to get like, his stuff I'm going to go there. into the office. So after they KO'd the nurse, he took the keys, went to, um, kept checking doors to see which one's Hartman's yeah. office. It had his name on it. Um, the page at the end of this chapter is Thomas Zane wrote himself out of the story. And I'm like, how do you do that? Do and then Thomas your... Zane died. You just like, <laughs> de just erase it. it. <laughs> like, Switch the word out with Alan Wake. <laughs> Thomas Zane was never a person. Like, I don't know how you do that. Um, and then he says he left something behind that it would fit in a shoebox. Um, chapter 17. I felt like I was missing something in between 16 and 17 because yeah. all of a sudden Barry's there. Yeah, Wake met back up with Barry who was locked in Hartman's office. And Isn't I feel he in like... Isn't he closet? He's some... Yeah. You hear him screaming, which they should yeah. have brought up at the end of chapter 16. It should have been like... And then I heard somebody yelling in one of the rooms... Or some, I'm yeah. not telling you how to write, Rick, but I'm telling you how to write. There was something so, missing. Because they didn't even say, like, All of a sudden, he Barry found him. was there. Barry, yeah. Barry says that, like, Hartman called him and was like, to oh, pick Alan's Alan up, here. Yeah. And then they Kid KO'd Alan. Barry and they threw him in a room. Um, He takes more manuscripts pages than he had before. And two tapes, one of Alice and one of Nightingale, off of Hartman's desk. And a cassette player in order to play them. Yeah. They run into Hartman as they leave, and he wake threatens him with a gun, and you know Hartman. Oh, we also see a framed photo on the wall, and we, he's like, "That's the kidnapper, Ben Mott." So Ben Mott oh. worked at the clinic. Yes. I'm like, what did he's in camo pants? What kind of job does Ben Mott? A kidnapper. Do? Kidnapper. Yeah, yeah, that's his job. Professional kidnapper. He's awful yeah. at it because he didn't kidnap anyone. <laughs> yeah, he just lied. Liar. Professional liar. I was like, it would make sense to me if he was a patient. Oh yeah, yeah. maybe. Well, I don't know. Do you think he'd let him let a patient wander out? around? I don't know. He's letting him do a lot well, of stuff. Well, he's letting the old people wander around, but that's because they're useless to him and his cause. Because all Hartman wants, he he made this whole place because he knows about the darkness and he knows the darkness loves creatives. So he wants to control it. So he has like, you know, the old gods of Asgard, old men who controlled it at one point mm -hmm. or helped it escape at one point. And he has all these people trying to make stuff for him so that he can control the darkness. That's his evil scheme. But it, I'm like, how do you even do that? I don't think he knows. I, he, I, unless you have people create things for you using the darkness and then you get fame from them. Because we find out later in a page that he was Zane's assistant. assistant. And yeah. so that's the connection there. But I don't remember that from the game at all. But. So Hartman walks in. Wake. I was like, when did Wake get a gun? He got it from the room. Because the gun was confiscated. Because you got to, after losing all of your possessions again, like in yeah, the big game, you got to gotta... get it back. I'm sure Hartman has a gun. <laughs> uh, the lights go out. We can barely leave. <laughs> they're like, they shut the door on way. Hartman <laughs> in the dark room and they hear him screaming and they're like, whatever. <laughs> he got eaten by the darkness. Yeah, he gets taken out like they did Mott. Uh, this is when um, furniture's Black Goo everywhere. and Poltergeist start showing up. It's Bendy. Yeah, yeah. Wake watched himself on TV again. He's writing in the cabin. Um, this is also, I hated the garden level. Yeah, so this was kind of confusing in the book because, like, Barry manages to escape, but then the door gets blocked, so mm -hmm. you have to go around. And in order to get to Barry in the car, you have to go through a garden maze. And you have to beat the boss, which is Nurse Birch. Yeah. And you have to get, like, a rocket launcher or something? It was something you had to there shoot There was, like, at a him. standoff as Barry tried to unlock the gate. Yeah. I remember that sucked. Um, Birch is taken with hedge clippers. He, of course, is saying his funny, his nonsense. Yeah. Um, Take two pills a day. The page at the end of this chapter is Barbara was Zane's muse. 
Chapter 18, they're driving to the farm, the Anderson Brothers farm, listening to Alice's tape. Turns out that Hartman cut up this audio, this phone conversation, to make it seem like they had Alice. And she says that he's not the husband of the year. <laughs> That's a direct quote. <laughs> giggle, giggle. Um, he reads some of the manuscript as well. He finds out that Barbara Jagger is the one who gave him the keys to the cabin on Cauldron Lake mm -hmm. at the Oh Dear Diner. And this is where he also hypothesized that Hartman wants the power of the lake. Yeah. Just when things were going smooth, a boulder rolls down the hill. The car falls off the road. Uh-oh, where's Barry? Yeah, they both jumped out, but now they're separated. And Toby the dog is dead. <laughs> yes, that's the page at the end is that Stucky axed Toby the dog. Chapter 19, Hate Barry children. is down the cliff. Alan is up the cliff. And Barry's got a flare gun from the rental car, so he's okay. Although the Taken is attacking him. <laughs> and he shoots the Taken, so now he dubs himself the Taken Killer. Yeah, he's he's having a great time. Alan starts walking down the path, and a glowing diver drops mm. another manuscript page, saying, I'm trying to drop them at the appropriate time. <laughs> and place. The manuscript he's he dropped awful. was about how Zane wrote a loophole about an object in a shoebox. We've already read this page, too. Yeah, but now it's at the appropriate mm -hmm. time. And then I have Wake versus the Harvester because they're going to the farm and there's a... Yeah, he found a car with a shotgun in it and then he gets attacked by a possessed Harvester. This is the one we have to shine the light on it forever. You also get that page where it talks about the Harvester being possessed like way early yeah. on in the game. So I was just sitting there in anticipation for like four chapters <laughs> being like, when am I going to get attacked by a giant Harvester? Um, Barry is on the stage at the farm shooting up all the flares he has. Um, there is the fight on the stage, which I thought was the one of the best parts it's of the, the game. It's the coolest part of the whole game. Yeah. It's like a, the old gods of Asgard stage with the giant dragon that brings Did all these fire. fireworks and stuff. And they're playing a rock song as you shoot all these guys and you have to like keep the lights on. And Barry who is the jack of all trades, master of none, because used to be a, he, he used to be a roadie, roadie so he's got to yeah. fix all of this equipment that's been in the rain for years. We did a good job, out, you know? Yeah. Which I think is more than he did in the game. Wasn't he just pressing buttons? Yeah, and like, you had to go fix it. You had to stuff. go fix of it. Of course. Um, the page at the end of this chapter is that Nightingale reads about him reading. <laughs> also, this is when the chainsaw... Um, taken and the fast taken yes. Look, are, are showing up. Um, chapter 20, Barry suggests that they call the sheriff. They listen to Nightingale's tape. Or he threatens Hartman because I guess he showed up at his door and was like, let me, give me out. I know he's in here. I want him. And he's like, come back with a warrant, sucker. I know the law. Uh, they start drinking the moonshine. Yeah, they go into the Anderson's barn because they were <laughs> trying to find a car, but there's no car in there. There's just a big Viking boat. Um, and there's also moonshine still that they have a drinking game when they're listening to Nightingales. <laughs> yeah, Alan's looking for the message that they left or the note that he thinks it is. And Barry's doing a drinking game with the moonshine when he's listening to the radio. And he's like, every time they say Deer Fest, take a shot. Yeah. Four times. So they drink the whole bottle. <laughs> yeah. They watch Night Springs and they get drunk together. That's where we find out that it was his first world writing job. Um, they listen to the they, album. Yeah, they find a vinyl record. And it's, uh, it's stuck. Find the lady of the night. Like, gone mad with the night. Yeah. Uh, and they pass out. They have to find Cynthia Weaver. Yeah. Because he's like, it's not a note, you it's dummy. A it's a message. Then they take it out. Uh, the page at the end of this chapter is Rose and the lady in black in her trailer. She wants to become Alan Wake's muse. Hmm. Poor Rusty. <laughs> uh, Alan is having a nightmare about being mean to Alice. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> At the beginning of chapter At the, yeah, bird leg cabin. Yeah. He's being such an ass in this one. And uh, he's like outside looking in like mean Alan is talking. Yeah, he has to rewatch everything that happened. Dark Barbara over here is rubbing it in. Saying, you can write her back to life, you know. <laughs> um, we find out that Wake wrote Zane into the story. Yeah, he's been... So he wrote for a week. That's where he was missing that whole week. He was in the cabin writing. Yeah. Which sucks to write for a week straight like that. That Maybe your hands got... Especially if you're typing, your hands got hurt. You're in a supernatural stupor. Yeah. Um, so he, did, he wrote Thomas... And this is where you get the inception. It's like, did Thomas write Wake or did Wake write right. Thomas? Well, we get that later. Yeah. 
But he wrote Zane into the story so that Zane could have like a tiff with Barbara. So he could and that, stop it. Yeah, allowed Alan to escape and grab a rental car and then crashed it like the beginning of the game book. So they awake in the Anderson home. Nightingale's there. He's pointing a gun at Alan. Uh, the, I think in the game he was actually contemplating just killing him on the spot. <laughs> the page at the end is Walter, who's the drunk in the... Yeah. Yeah. He wants to steal the booze, but he sees a man on the porch. You think the man is Nightingale? Maybe. Chapter 22, Wake is in jail. Alan and Barry are in jail. Nightingale uh, took all of his pages again. The dude keeps losing his manuscript um, pages. I saw that be a lot of pages, too, that he's been collecting. Um, been Deerfest is tomorrow. And Deerfest is tomorrow. <laughs> Um, Cynthia Weaver shows up for like a hot second. I feel like she disappeared. Yeah, she said she weird. has the key. It was she weird. was in the cell, and then she was just an illusion. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I don't it's think the, Alan's doing so well. The moonshine, concussion, moonshine, drugged, Exhaust. <laughs> yeah. exhaustion. Um, Nightingale has the manuscript, so now this is what he, he's using as evidence to. Uh, yeah, I'm because arrested. apparently um, his cause for arrest is conspiracy to murder, murder, murderer, <laughs> a federal agent. Um, he says rep- he knew it when reports came over the wire last week. I was like, what reports? That his wife's missing? Maybe. Um, Finn was his partner and he talked about the darkness and then he disappeared. So he thinks Wake has something to do with it. Wake has a vision of the lake with the diver and this the is more clicker. information than we got in the game for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Nightingale says, over my dead body. Then he's like, oh, wait, that sounds familiar. Wait, pulls wait, out I, the pa- I said that. Pulls out the page. It's in the manuscript. The darkness then comes in and takes Nightingale. Yeah, but Sarah Breaker's also there, by the way. Because like, she's the? like, you can't arrest Alan. And then Alan, like, when the tremor happens, he falls on the ground. So she opens up the cage to go, like, help him up. So she's in the prison with Alan. While Nightingale points a gun and is like, wait, I read this before. And then he's reading the manuscript and it says, and uh, Nightingale points a gun at Alan and then gets eaten by darkness. <laughs> and then he does. Because you, in the game, you go and you pick up that page and you read what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the page at the end of this chapter is uh, that Sarah, the sheriff, is in the chopper as she reminisces on them talking about how they were rock stars on the Anderson farm. Uh, Which will happen in a little bit. Yep. Uh, a fire truck comes into the police station. Yeah. This was not super clear in the writing. What, I wasn't what sure what was happening. happening. If you didn't play the game and you're just reading it, this would be really confusing. But all of these um, items are like being lifted in the air and then like thrown places. And they're like possessed by the darkness. So this happens several times throughout, but but yeah. like we're still in the police station, mm-hmm. which confused me because I thought we were outside by now. But they run into Sarah Breaker's office to grab flashlights and guns, and Wake just tells her everything. Yep, at this everything. Point. Um, she gives Barry a list and says, "Call these people." Here's the code word: it's Night Springs. Da da da. Yeah. Call my dad first, though. <laughs> Um, how is Barry calling these people? Because in the wasn't he on the phone in the police station while you, in the game while you went outside to do to something. fix the breakers? So yeah. there's no power in the police station. So how is she calling people? I don't know. He Plastic. was calling people though because yeah. if you walked by his window, he was calling. I'm like, a bunch he has of different probably people. has a cell phone. That's it. Um, you have to find the lamp lady. The sheriff says, "Oh yeah, she illegally lives in the power station." Yeah, we, we all just let her live there. It's fine. It's fine. She's a national treasure. <laughs> it's the power station is in the dam. So Sarah's like, "We gotta take the helicopter." To and get there. she talks about she wrote a song about her. When she, she made fun of her, like everyone child. else does. Yeah. And her dad's like, "Stop that! She's a national treasure. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> She's the best thing this town has going for them." Um, they run into, oh, they have to run past the book shop, which you go into the bookshop in the game. Yeah. And she, she talks makes about fun her of childhood. Yeah. <laughs> um, they run into, uh, taken Tom Egan. Oh, I liked in the bookstore, there was like a sign that says, Alan Wake's visiting our humble town. See if you can snag him to get an autograph for the book. <laughs> and I was like, oh man. You all. Um, so Sarah has to shoot Tom. She's like, I know him. And he's like, well, now you're part of the Taken crew. <laughs> taken killer. Uh, they go to the diner and then a dump truck uh, comes down the street and there's like people like taken on it. And that was, it causes all the windows to break. And so they have to go to the general store. Uh, so in the game, this was something that I liked in the game and didn't happen in the 
book where you think Barry's dead. Well, like, something splits you and Barry yeah. up. So it's you and Sarah and, like, I think a car falls down. So yeah. he has to go a different direction. And then he just, like, disappears. For a long time. Yeah, and you don't... They also took out the church scene. Yeah, oh, yeah. That wasn't in here. You that also don't go to Nightingale's often. hotel room. Yeah, you don't. Um... Mm. They're oh. in the general store, and they run into Barry. Well, he's still with them. Yeah. But he's wearing Christmas lights. Because <laughs> they're battery-powered. Uh, Wake also sees him on the TV again, writing himself into the story. Hmm. So he does that on purpose, so that way he it affects him, but he can also affect the story. And he's like, everything happening is my fault, and it I is. did it. Yeah. So a Tegan shows up in the general store, but Barry has a plan. He set up the entire store to be filled with Christmas lights, enough to take out the Taken. Mm. The page at the end is Mott, which is the kidnapper, is looking for Wade. Um, car. He finds the car near Divers Island because he goes to the ca- other, the real cabin. He's trying to find Wake. Wait, yeah, yeah. Did I say Wade? You said Wade. <laughs> <laughs> like who's Wade? So. The page at the end is Ma is looking for Wade. Uh, he finds his car near Divers Island because he's not where at the correct cabin. And then um, Hartman wouldn't be happy. So again, we find out that they work together somehow. So uh, they made it to the chopper, by the way. <laughs> They're in the chopper. That happened at the end of the chapter. After some struggle to get it to start, which is a whole oh, fight gosh. sequence in this. Yeah, because you go through the church and then you run into Barry. Yeah. Like outside. So and he's got all the they light. just ignored the church. He's like, I'm a rock star again. I'm happy Barry's for living him. his best life. Um, and in chapter 24, they just kind of talk. They, they have a uh, canned coffee. They drink that canned was... coffee in the back. <laughs> She's like, We have fancy things too, Mr. Allen Wayne. Yeah. And I read your books. Mm-hmm. My dad and I. A <laughs> little heavy on the metaphors. You were. Uh... Dumb. We made fun of you the yeah. whole time because you don't know anything about cops. Barry. Oh, this is another thing I wrote on here. Okay. Um. Barry's like, well, who would play me in the movie? And he first he says Philip Seymour Hoffman, and then he's like, no, he's fat. I'm just husky. Which that's a cheap blow, and that I don't think was in the game at all. No. Also, this is written in 2010. Um. Philip Seymour Hoffman, for those of you that don't know, he I is an know. Academy Award winning actor. He was fantastic. He passes away four years after this book is written from a drug overdose. And weight is definitely something that he dealt with for his like whole career. But um, I was like, so are you that's saying a cheap... that they're being rude? Yeah, to that Philip was Seymour so rude. Hoffman? Also, Barry in the game is sadder than Philip Seymour Hoffman. I think they're about the same. Yeah. I could see uh, him playing Barry. <laughs> So I was like, that's rude. Um, it starts getting windy. They get thrown all over the place. Uh, Sarah mentions that there's 4,000 people here, which is super tiny. She's in charge of them. She feels mm-hmm. responsible. Then the birds are back. Yeah, a bunch of ravens attack the helicopter, causing it to crash in the woods. Mm, they're on foot. So they start walking to the abandoned power plant. The page at the end of this chapter is the the doc um, checks out Barry and Rose and says there's something wrong with Rose. She's like touched in the head. So concussion. Chapter 25. Bright Falls Dam is the power station. And it took forever to get there in the game and you get separated and people well, attack yeah, you. Like, but we you, are right there. You fall off the helicopter in the game yeah. and uh, Barry and Sarah have to like hang out and fight the things on you need own. to find like something you're missing right a piece yeah or something. and you walk in there so you show up to the power plant with sarah and barry which you don't do in mm-hmm. the game you're alone and, and you- uh and you just go to the because she's like oh the item you need's in the well-lit room inside the dam you honestly in the book you go there no fuss in yeah. the game it's a lot of fuss yeah you see Miss Weaver and you say, the darkness, the dark presence has my wife, Miss Weaver. We need your help. She's like, okay, it's all I need here. Weaver loved Thomas. Mm. The only way to beat the darkness is to make small changes, is what she said to um, Alan. And he takes that to heart later and on. And the thing you need is in the well-lit room. Yeah, because like, okay, so you're going there alone as Alan in the game. And then you are walking through a pipe to get to the dam. But then you see... Barry and Sarah's like helicopter crash and you're like gotta save my friends and she's like you're stupid but yeah. I'll meet you at the dam later so then you go and save your friends and then like through a whole chapter of walking back to the dam that's in the game that would made this book this but book could have been easily this been 500 book pages 
is shorter. And they're like, yeah, let me just take you there real lickety split. So In the wallet room, there is a page and a light switch. And Tom wrote about Alan at age 11 getting the clicker. And that freaked Alan out a little bit. This is a little stranger than fiction. Yeah, and this is the best quote. Uh, was Wake a creation of Thomas Zane or is Thomas Zane a creation of Alan Wake? And that's like the whole point of this. Because you're like, is Thomas Wake writing a Thomas Wake? Is Tom- <laughs> <laughs> They are the one. They are the one. Is Thomas Zane writing Alan Wake or does Alan Wake invent Thomas Zane for this? We don't know. We never know. It's so confusing. Inception. The page at the end of this chapter, we find out that Hartman was Zane's assistant. Chapter 26. We are almost done. Alan has to go back to the lake by himself. It's a very Harry Potter moment. What? Harry Potter has to go in the forest with the... He's got to go with the clicker. At the end, when he goes into the forest with the stone, he has to fight Voldemort, so Voldemort kills him. Zane has, or Zane has to go by himself. Yeah. Alan has to go by himself to the water. He jumps in the lake. Sinking down. He sees Thomas Zane next to him in the diving suit. Thomas is talking about how he had to cut out Barbara's heart. But she didn't have a heart. Yeah, so he wrote Barbara back into the story to bring her back to life. But it turns out that the darkness Which is just very kind of cemetery. just kind of consumed Barbara. So now she's not. She the darkness is wearing her skin. So but he she's was got like, a big hole in her chest. So she, he was like, "I'm gonna cut her heart out because that sounds cool." So he does that, and she's still alive. That's crazy. Um, this is also another question <laughs> I that I have. Know. Mr. Scratch? Yes. That's wild. This this soul scene in the game I don't was get so it. wild. Where it's, he's talking to Thomas Zane under the water, and Thomas Zane is like, this is Mr. Scratch. Like It's he, another Alan Wake. Yeah, and he's smiling at him. like, And Alan Wake's like, what? And he's like, oh, all your friends will know him when you're gone. And I was like excuse me and then he just move on <laughs> yeah he's not mentioned ever again i thought he, he was is, gonna replace alan wake he is mentioned in two on the he's, surface he's the big deal in two is he who you play at the beginning i don't of know two? i didn't get far enough but he's a he's a big deal in two i'm not gonna spoil anything but then i'm also like is he part of the darkness is he uh, i'm assuming alan wake well actually i'm not gonna assume anything because all y'all probably have played alan wake too and i don't want to look like a fool oh yeah we haven't gotten there yet i'm not going to say anything but this was such a funny scene imagine not having a sequel to this game imagine us like a year ago (laughs) it took a a long time for it because the game came out it was 14 13 years later there was um alan wake's big hot wet american nightmare or whatever which is that in betweener where i think alan's just in the dark place fighting stuff with a shotgun and a plaid shirt um, but I don't know if that has Scratch in it because I didn't play that one. But we'll anyway, I love the scene because he's like, this is Mr. Scratch. All your friends will know about him. And Alan's like, wait, what? And he's like, don't worry about it. Anyway, let's move on to the next part. <laughs> so he has to take the clicker and they're in the cabin. And Barbara's there and Barbara's she's like, there. oh, I don't need you. I can find other writers. And so he puts the clicker in where her heart should be and turns it on. And then bye, Barbara. Bye, Barbara. Then he talks about, I have to write the last page. So he's going to go to the study. He's like, now I understand about light, darkness, cause and effect. And so he writes the last page. Epilogue. It's not a lake. It's, it's an, an ocean. ocean. I don't understand that either. It's an ocean. They mention it at the beginning and then again at the end. Does this mean that it's this whole thing is bigger than it's what... It's bigger than what you can imagine. Mm. There's always a lighthouse. Will you stop saying that? <laughs> you say that like every time we talk about books. <laughs> Nobody likes Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> Alice breaks through the surface and swims. What does that mean, the... <laughs> by the way? What does that mean? There's what always is... a lighthouse? Yeah. In the infinite amount of possible universe. Monkey there's... typewriter? <laughs> is that what that means if, if you give a monkey a typewriter he'll write about a stupid lighthouse there's oh one of them will the, be named thomas wayne <laughs> <laughs> thomas wake yeah um it's the one consistency in every in all of the multi-universes is the lighthouse that's what it's that the means thing that holds it together well you know in every universe there's always an ocean yes well not a lake <laughs> Um, so Alice... Where are they gonna put that lighthouse, huh? I don't know. That will On the lake? lake? No, <laughs> on the ocean. 
Um, the it was the switcheroo. So Alan had to give himself up in order for Alice to equivalent exchange. Yeah. Uh, I was like, poor Pat Moore. Someone give him a day off. He's yeah. still on the radio. So Alice comes out of the lake, but like only her, not Alan, because Alan's still in the dark place. Sheriff a Breaker Sarah is here to help her out of. She's like, the oh, water. I know Alan. She's like, Alan, you must have known him very well for you to for call, you him, call him Alan. Alan. Crazy. Um, which does not happen in the game. She just kind of crawls out of the water and is like, where's Alan? There's, and then there's she like a monologue, right? She's at the stand. diner or something like that. It's Deer Fest, though. Yes. Yay. But Pat, Pat was like, dude, y'all went a little crazy last night and yeah, like chill out. destroyed our town. So next year, how about not? Don't give this town a black eye. Yeah. <laughs> Deer Fest. And that's the end. Oh, both Alice and Sarah were like, yeah, Alan isn't coming back, is yeah. he? Mm. And then they hook up. Just kidding. It's but imagine. <laughs> so does Alice have to stay there forever now to wait for Alan, or does she go back to New York? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about it too. We'll have to see. So that is the whole story of Alan Wake. It's kind of we explained both the book and the game. I still I'm like what happened to the other Alan. Oh, Mr. Scratch. Yeah. I guess oh, I'll have to there play is Alan the Wake DLC. Too. Did you play the DLCs? No. The t- the two where um. Because he does show up in that one because you're still playing as Alan, but you're in the dark place and you're running around and like your boss fight is the Alan on the TV screen, which is Mr. Scratch. But it's also like but you. But wasn't that you the week that you were missing? It was you. Um, does time not exist? It was two different versions of you. The The one on the screen that you were fighting in the dark place was the one that was giving up and just wanting you to die. So he was trying to kill you, and the one that was, like, still fighting was obviously, like, the... Like, I still want to keep going and mm. try to live through this. So you were playing as that one, and the other one was trying to kill you. And it was really funny, because you'd walk around, and all of a sudden, the narrator would show up, and then, like... And then Alan got chopped to bits by a bunch of dudes who just spawned behind him. And I was like, oh, my God. And then you have to deal with that. Oh, my goodness. Oh. oh but it was kind know. of interesting, you know? And then you... At the end of it, you... Spoilers to the DLCs. You managed to like meld into one, and it turns out you were just on the floor, like hyperventilating. <laughs> oh, the dreams that Alan Wake has. <laughs> yeah, so that's the two DLCs for Alan Wake One. Interesting. That wasn't in the remaster. Definitely was part of it. Nope. Yeah, it was. It came with the remaster. I don't remember that. It was two at all. extra episodes. It was called The Writer and The Signal. I don't remember it. Someone didn't like Alan Wake enough. <laughs> no, I was really pushing through to finish it. Okay, so our next book is the book that inspired the video game series Stalker. The Horde is by Ursula Le Guin? Yeah. It's a very Dang. popular novel. That's Roadside Picnic. Roadside Picnic by Arkadian Boris Strogatsky. So we're going to read that next. All right. See you guys. See ya.